Hello everybody. In this video, I will show how we can use the other features of the ESP XP Entrant Master to send RTK correction data and GPS location data over the local network rather than over a cloud-based system as we have done in previous videos. So I will heavily rely on the setup in terms of the hardware and also in terms of the software, which I have shown in my previous videos. So if you haven't seen those, I suggest you go to my playlist and watch those videos first. Otherwise, what I will present here may not make too much sense to you. A link will be in the description. All right. So in the previous videos, we have set up a base station and then we have sent correction data either to a dpn network for cryptocurrency or to an entrant caster. So we can then download the correction data anywhere in the world to a rover. However, in this video, I will use the local features of the ESP Entrant Master to send data directly from, for example, a base station over the local Wi-Fi network to a rover, or alternatively, send position data from the rover to a laptop to display it, for example, on a map, and also to allow remote configuration of the base station, for example, if your antenna is inaccessible, like in my case, where my antenna is in the garage, it is quite convenient to be able to remotely change the configurations. All right, then let's get started by taking a look at the user interface right here, where if you scroll down, you can see the, the various options. And the first one I want to activate is the socket server, which allows me to remotely connect to my ESP and then make changes. So in this case, I have set my RGB LED to red. Again, there's a previous video in the playlist where you can find how to connect your RGB LED to your ESP. If I activate it, and connect then you will see that now we have the red led here blinking indicating that our tcp or udp socket is active and then bring in my uprecise software and i could connect via the com port but in this case now i want to use the tcp ip connection and for that i will have to copy the ip address of my esp and put this into here I have to delete a couple of things here to just have the IP address. And then the port is 23. So I will have to provide the port number as well. And then I can connect. And you will see now I have connected to my UM982 here, which is locally on my desk. If you take a look here at this LED now, before the red was kind of solid red, and now it is pulsating, indicating that I have connected to my device. All right, now I can simply use my uprecise as if I would be connected locally. I can, for example, give it an F3 set to make sure everything is set to factory default. And then once my device has rebooted, I can use the GNGTA command to request position data, like so. And then you can see here I get my position and my map updates to display the position of my antenna which right now is somewhere in my backyard here. And I also can, of course, request the same data every second by adding a one behind my command to indicate the time interval for receiving my position data. And similarly, I can request the information about the visible satellite with the GSV command. Again, I want to have this every second. So there is one correction I have to make to my previous videos. And that is that there actually is no default port to which data is sent, as I have falsely told you guys in one of my previous videos. But rather how it works is that if I do not provide port information with my command, then the response is sent to the port from which the command has been received. If I, however, want to send my response to a different port, then I have to specify that. So for example, if I make this here a little bit smaller and bring in a second instance of uprecise, I can connect via the USB cable for, to this instance. So this is my, my device is connected via this uh, USB cable here. And if I say connect, then I have my UM980 device here and I do not receive any data just yet because I'm not sending any data to COM4. But if I go into my uprecise, which is connected over the TCP port, then I can now go into here and I can say, I want to have my GTA command to COM3, which is the port connected to the USB socket here. If I now send this one, you can see that now we are receiving data 
here as well. And then, for example, I can use the unlock command, unlock command here. And that means that now no more data is sent to my COM2, which happens to be connected to the header pins here, but I still receive data right here via my USB port. And then, of course, if I go into here and say unlock COM3, then I also stop the logging of position data to my USB port. So that's the basic mechanics of how you tell the device to what port you want to send your requested data. All right, so let's close this one here out, maximize this one here, and maybe give it an F reset to set it back to our default parameters. And I want to close this one here as well. And now I want to actually connect to the XP I have in my garage and enable the socket server here. Let me actually disable the socket server on my desk here. So submit and submit. So again, let me bring in an instance of uPrecise. And in this case, I want to connect the remote UM module to it, which in this case is the IP address 54 here. So there again. And the port is the same as 23. And now I can connect to it. And then I can start talking to my remote station again by simply requesting the position data right here. And if I zoom in on the map, you can see now my antenna is located here on the top of my garage and wouldn't be accessible to me via the USB cable. Okay, and now I can send position data from my ESP, which is up in my garage, to my ESP on my desk where I have disconnected the GPS module from. And so I have to go into the XP interface here. And in this case, I want to activate the socket client and I have to provide the IP address of the XP in my garage and the, the port number. And then I can say submit. And hopefully we will then see that now this little LED is starting to blink blue. And also we will see that we have incoming data from my ESP. And you will see this little blue LED flash every second indicating that we are receiving data. So I then can open a serial monitor, for example, from the Arduino interface. And you can see that we are now receiving our GTA signals here via the USB cable to our serial monitor. And similarly, I can use QGIS or any other geographic information system to connect to my device locally. And then if I zoom in here, you can see again the antenna on the top of my garage here. And QGIS lets me zoom in much closer than I can zoom in in uh, Uprecise or Google Maps for this matter. And I can see the wandering of my antenna position because now this is uncorrected uh, position data. In any case, how to connect uh, the device to QGIS or to Google Map will be part of a separate video. But I just wanted to show you here that it is possible. And so I suggest you subscribe if you don't want to miss it. All right, so let's do what maybe most of you have been waiting for. And that is to connect the base station on the roof directly to a rover using the local network. And to do that, we have to, again, use Uprecise, connect it to our remote station. And then we can configure our remote XP as a base station by again starting typically with the F reset command to make sure we are starting with a fresh slate. Then we should configure our signal groups with for the UM82 dual antenna model. Typically, I use three and six, gives us the largest satellite constellation. Again, the signal group command forces a restart of the module. And then we can either set the base, the automatic base station mode with providing a time over which to average the position and a tolerance in terms of how far our base station can move before it starts to acquire a new averaged uh, position. Or in my case, 
I actually want to use the fixed base station, which is this command here where you say mode base, and then you provide the latitude and the longitude and the elevation of your antenna, which I have determined to within an accuracy of uh, only two millimeters using post processing with ambiguity resolution, which again will be shown in a later video on how you can get your own precise location of your antenna. So let's send this command, make sure you get an OK. And now we can do what we have done before. We can start requesting the base station antenna reference every 30 seconds. We can request a description of our base station and antenna with the 1033 command again. This is something we don't need to send very often. Every 30 seconds is plenty to save some bandwidth. And then we want to request the GPS correction data every second, the Russian signal also every second, the Europeans every second. If you are in a region where you can get the Indian system, you can use this command. I'm not getting it, so I won't be sending it. And definitely we want to get the Chinese constellation, which again is a global constellation, actually the largest one. So we definitely want to use that one. And then don't forget to use the save config command to save your configuration into the non-volatile memory. So it will restart after a power outage to those settings. All right, so now we have set up our GNSS module. And what we need to do now, we need to go into the XP configuration. And in this case, we use the ntrip caster setting and here you have to provide a, a port number which the default is the 2104 you have to come up with a name you can use any name you want here also a username you can use whatever you want and a password and what i'm actually doing here i'm using the same credentials than i'm using for my rtk to go station so i don't have to constantly change those values here and submit all right and then i can configure my base station uh, locally here via the USB as a rover. So let me do that by first sending the F reset command as we always do, and then configuring the signal group. Again, the commands you need to send to make your UM980 or 982 a rover will be in the description. And now we can set it as a rover. I also like to configure the timeout of the RTK signal to something like 10 seconds because any time interval larger than 10 seconds between your position data and the last received correction data really will start to degrade your position accuracy. So let's make this a 10 second. You can set the reliability of our RTK signal 3, which is a pretty high reliability if you have good signals. And then with save config, we can save the configuration of our rover. And then we also want to start receiving the actual position data, the GGA signal every second. So again, right here we are in the backyard. And we also can request the the velocity of our device. So right now, as you can see, there is no velocity. Hopefully there will not much of a velocity anyhow, because we are a stationary antenna. Anyhow, if I send this com command, now you will see that we have a velocity of around one millimeter per second, yeah, which is the, the velocity which our signal is drifting. We can request the quality of our signal and we can request information about the constellation of the received satellites. And what you can see now is that our position fix is single, which means this is regular old GPS with an accuracy of around two meters. And if you look carefully here, unfortunately, I can't zoom in more. You can see that we can see some drifting here. And of course, if I open up my trajectory monitor and zoom in here, you can see that we are drifting quite significantly. So right now we have been drifting by about two centimeters coming up on three centimeters and so on. And then if I go back to my XP configuration here and I connect to the XP on my desk here, 
I can now request Entrip data by activating the Entrip client. And instead of giving it the URL to RTK to go, in this case, I'm giving it the IP address of my local Entrip caster in my garage. I also can maybe change the color of my RGB LED to green, and I can start, uh, I can press submit to start requesting my correction data. And soon enough, you hopefully will see that this LED here will start to blink uh, green, and also that we are receiving correction data here. And eventually, we should see that our RTK signal comes on here. Right here, our, our RTK LED just turned on. And then if we go back to you precise, you will now see that our signal has disappeared from here. So I actually have to kind of zoom out a little bit to find our signal. So right here, and I can center on it. And now we have our precisely RTK corrected uh, position here. So if I zoom in here, you will see that this position now does that and drift much outside of this one centimeter radius ring here, indicating that we have a good RTK fix. And also here, in the fix type, we now see that we have an RTK fix achieved. All right, so that's it for today. If this was useful. Please give it a like and consider to subscribe. And I will see you hopefully soon. Goodbye.